Well, it's one o'clock, and the Brooklyn Cafe is open for business. The team is ready to serve you a huge portion of fun for lunch. Open that lunch pail and unwrap that sandwich you brought. Take a front row seat in the Brooklyn Cafe and get ready to enjoy the humor and hot topics. It's time to get a healthy serving of feel good and happy soup to help your day go easy and enjoy your break with others around you. Your host Don and Freddie S are ready to talk about food, health, dating. Or just plain dream making the feel good food you need to help that bagel go down nice and smoothly. If you have a story to share, anything that happened at work, play, a movie review, restaurant critique, or just a coincidental thing that happened to you today, call in toll free eight 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 five six five fourteen seven right now. So sit back and enjoy your lunch break at the Brooklyn Cafe. And let Dawn and Freddie S get your happy juices flowing. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Brooklyn Cafe. All our friends in South Florida. It is a wonderful man. It's hot in here. <laughs> wonderful Friday. I mean, it is burning up in Why here. It's so hot in here. It is because we got the bet. What do you mean it's hot? The food is hot, baby. Oh my gosh! Look at this food. Now, the Brooklyn Cafe. The reason we called it is because of things like today. Things like today. Because you know something, Sicilian pie. I lived in Florida 13 years. I've never seen a Sicilian pie. And when I tell people, can you make the pizza square, well, they do some nonsense. That's Sicilian. This is Sicilian pie. It used pie. to be my favorite. That's all you ate with Sicilian. I know. Your mother told me. <laughs> Did she? Yeah. She says, you thought it was Greek, but it's a Sicilian. It was before she found Weight Watchers for me. But now, Peter <laughs> was gracious, gracefully enough to bring Nino's on today, right? Nino's Restaurant, Peter is that the name? Peter from Mall County. Nino's Italian Restaurant, yeah. And Peter from Mall County Restaurant. And make sure that we have Peter's mic lit. Is Peter's mic lit? I have to lit? tell you, Venus has been around, oh my gosh, since I moved to Boca. I was pregnant with my son, and he's going to be 24. I remember right before I had him, my daughter ran away down the sidewalk in front of Nino's. I tried to catch her. My belly was so big. My friends were hysterically laughing. That is how long I've been going to Nino's. Yeah, we've been there since 1982. Get closer crazy? to the mic. Since 1982. 82, yeah. We've been there since 1982. So let me get this right. You were eating Nino since 1982? <laughs> no, I've been here since 1994. So you've been eating Nino since 1982? <laughs> yeah, since 1982. We're actually getting closer. <laughs> Dawn doesn't have a birth certificate. <laughs> it burned up in the fire of 1812. Yeah, I'm sure. But I have not tried all of these delicious meals. I cannot even believe what you all brought here. But, you know, Sicilian caught my eye. Nobody brings Sicilian on the set. Here's my question. And that's just not any Sicilian. That's the upside down red pizza famous from Brooklyn, Bensonhurst. You know? serious? Yeah. That's a, that's a, what does that mean? 
What do you mean? That's that's an icon. I know you can't so, you know, eat it, but I get to eat it. It's an that. icon. You can't even Listen, enjoy you it. Listen, you ever you ever um gone? I get excited. You ever gone to Manhattan and got a dog, a hot dog from a dog. um a dog? You got it. It's D A W G. But you get it. You get it from Papaya King. You remember Papaya King in no, in Manhattan? Uh-huh. Oh my Nathan's God! My Nathan's was in Brooklyn. <clears throat> yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah. But you go to Papaya King, you have to have twenty-five dogs. I mean, you get sick afterwards. Yeah. It's like if you go well, after dancing, what did you hit? It's like White Murder Castle. Burger. There, White Castle. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. White Castle. All I can That's tell what you that all is. is we're at the heart of Delray Gallery. We're at 1440 North Federal Highway, and if you want some delicious food, and you're in the area of Delray Boca Boynton, come on down. Just walk in the doors. Head to Studio A. And come on in, slide them open, and enjoy this delicious food. Because unless all of these kids are going to be eating really well today. You guys are going to be eating healthy. It's a good thing we've got a full set of our interns with us. Mar, are you going to eat it all? Will you? <laughs> They're claiming dibs on the food. Holy smoke, the shy one speaks. Now, let me tell you, the last time Dawn invited people to come on set to eat, we had those two ladies in here that came with right off hats. the street. Yeah, well, we had hats. a birthday party on Tuesday. She invited people to come in. These ladies came, and I'm taking pictures with them, and we're drinking champagne, and we're doing all this stuff. And, I, and she says, do you treat all your unknown guests this way? And I said, aren't you with the crowd? No, we just, we just walked in. We've had a week of food. Tuesday, we had a birthday party. Yesterday we had a catering company, and Peter, you always hook us up really well. This is far above and beyond. It's scary. How best, do you know Marco? The best, the best pizza. Because he eats. He's I been a customer from, for years. Yeah. He's been a customer for years. This Peter guy likes to eat. Peter loves to eat. Loves to. Eat. And then he tells me, "Hey, Freddie." I'm gaining a couple of pounds. I said, oh, you're going to gain a couple of more. I can now blame This doesn't know. fit in your lunchbox, though. I tease yeah. Peter about his lunchbox every day. No, the, the whole staff knows him by name. They know. The whole staff knows. Everybody knows Peter in the eatery business. Yeah. I'm glad we have the radio show, and it does cover the lower portion of my stuff. That's why we sit. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so tell me about the iconic pizza. It's not just a square pie, apparently. Uh, it's, you don't call it a square pie? What's the matter? Well, you call it a church a building? It's not just a square pizza, so tell me the difference. It's a Sicilian pizza. Tell me what that means. Uh, yeah, yeah. What is a pizza usually, round? Yes. Okay, do you see a round pizza? That's why I say, is this just a square pizza? No, it tastes different. Right? You know. Oh, well, I brought the round also, so, so you tell, a little comparison. All right, so tell us that we're going to do some taste testing. You hey, guys ready to do some taste testing? Yes. 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 Now, pizza, Mara, pizza. Instagram it. Taste test, Sicilian or traditional rounds? Do you know what the problem is going to be, though? Is once you try this, you're always going to seek this. Of and course. You're not going to find it. You're not. Right? So it's like once you do this to yourself, there's no going back. Oh, there is absolutely no going back to Sicilian pizza. All right, so if I you have can to try it. this. See this? See how the cheese is like underneath the There's sauce. a layer of cheese underneath, underneath the, the sauce, sauce. Freddie. Do you yeah. see that? Oh, Mara, take a look at this. We've never this? had the upside down. Oh. Well, well, honestly, it's upside down pizza. The upside down Sicilian. You're not from Brooklyn? No, Long Island, but I've never had upside down. Me too. Sicilian yeah, that's thing. a that's a Bensonhurst thing. My is dad it? is yeah. from Bensonhurst. I know, because I couldn't get this in the Bronx. Well, we do, we do have places yeah. on Long Island now that, that do upside down. I've down. Had but they've copied it. That's the way she eats. That's how I eat. Sorry. Should I just bite into it? But what are you doing? You got to eat the whole bite. You can't just take it apart. Now, I'm going to tell you, this Sicilian, this is the only gentleman that I know that makes this. Now, I've been here 13, 14 years looking for Nobody makes this. You can't really. I can have a bite. Only Adino's is the Sicilian. Unbelievable. This is unbelievable. So, you brought this from from Brooklyn as a traditional dish? Well, it's a traditional Brooklyn, the upside down. They also call it the red pie. The red pie. Yeah. That's what they used to call in the uh, Bronx, the red pipe, but it was very I rare. I make you take a bite. It's good? It's really unbelievable. The Are sauce? Taste test? You're, a, you're a sauce That's kind of guy? That's what this is. This highlights the sauce. It makes the, like, the sauce really And Freddie's a sauce yeah, guy. He'll tell, tell the sauce. sauce. This. Yeah. this is a sweet sauce. Here. Yep. Yep. Right? Is it different than the regular? No, so same, same, same sauce. sauce, but it's funny when you how, make how it is with it, the Freddy? cheese on top. I got it sauce all over my mouth. Together. This is delicious. Like pasta. It's delicious, pasta is right? all the same recipes, right. but the different shapes give it actually different flavors. If you think about biting into a normal pie or even a normal Sicilian pie, the first thing that reaches the roof of your mouth is the hot cheese, which usually burns right. you. In this right. case, it's the sauce that's hitting the roof of your mouth. It's the first thing you taste with the delicious, fruitful olive oil that he puts on top of that. Oh, I'm salivating. Think and you're it. the worst and pizza in... Where, Palm Beach County or the worst pizza in the world? Worst well, I run a website com. called worstpizza.com worst pizza. where really? we look to find the best pizza in the country <laughs> and rank it. Um, I think it's like, it's like the it's first and second most popular pizza review site in the country. 
Uh, I just happen to live here. We had talked about a year ago about doing a pizza contest to find the best pizza yeah. in South Florida. I've done it already. It's and it's Nina. Save you the trouble. I've tasted it all, but we should probably taste it again. Just we should safe. taste it again. So we should compare the Sicilian with the regular. Oh what do you think? God. You're coming up, but you're talking again. In the bottom line, Sicilian is a thicker crust of pizza. He has cheese in the middle. Do you love this? Pizzas. You know, in Florida, they like that thin crust pizza. Right. I hate that crap. I just don't like that. Mar, what do you like? This is yeah, fantastic. Dinner. I can't. I hate it because... You know, it's funny when you, when you talk pizza. I, I, there was this place, oh my gosh. Sicilian oven, and I went in there and I didn't even see a piece of Sicilian. And the dough, <laughs> it's not, and the crust on this, yeah. it's even sweet, also. No, we make our own their dough fresh every day, every morning. So you've owned yeah. Nino's since 1982. Well, my father started the the, the restaurant, and uh, I took over. Uh, he finally retired in 2008, and I took over. So. Amazing. Has the pizza business changed? Now you came down here. The water is different, the heat, the yeast, all the stuff that you use, the ingredients well, are different. Obviously, the only big difference I really see down here, I mean, the water does make a small difference, but I think it's negligible. What makes the big difference in Florida is the humidity it destroys everything. The humidity. The humidity destroys everything down here. So, crispy pizza, you got to have it only in the restaurant. It's like no such thing. Taking it out. Yep. No such so, thing when you have this delivered, it's going to be a whole different animal. A whole different animal. Yep. You got to try it there, fresh out of the oven. It's a whole nother experience so you know, they got to go to coming. Nino's restaurants come and go we've worked with quite a few restaurants a few? that don't even make it a year you've been there for since I was 1982 I was 12 years old when my father started that store that's I'm, unbelievable I'm 48 now so you guys want to try pizza yes uh -huh. there's okay. regular pizza behind smiley and then do you want to the no, try the Sicilian I have this. No, right, this I hand it over menu let me get that box you have to be in no, the no, middle let's just do it. and just order it upside down Sicilian let, 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 let me get the so box so you do worstpizza.com you've done this for how long um, well over a decade yeah. and you go to all the different pizza right, places and you see what's going on Yep, we try yeah, every pizza place that. almost that I pass. I try to just stop in, and depending on whom I'm with, we'll just cut the pie in a bunch of little pieces, take our taste, move on to the next place, keep going until we find what we determine to be the best in that city. Worstpizza.com, it's a whole art to what you and I have been talking about. Worstpizza.com. So he finds the best pizza, and Nino's is, by far. Unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Now, the funny thing is that the, the Brooklyn Cafe used to be called Two Boys from Brooklyn. It was a, a TV show shoot for A&E, and it was about the worst and the best pizza in Florida. And I had a, a gentleman, a friend of mine, and he got sick and we stopped doing it, but this radio gig was supposed to be our job. I'm eating your pizza. And then we went on the road to find the pizzas. I'm gonna tell you, we did it for like two or three weeks. Oh my God, I stopped doing it because oh I got sick. How, how is it? It tastes like um, pizza hot breadsticks. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> no more pizza for her. No, no, that's a you are pizza right out. <laughs> Delicious, Jaja. Janice. Stick Adele, to the meatballs. Did you get any? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to make you the pizza Nazi. Did you not want any? One of the seasonings is the same. Un poquito. No? The seasoning? Oregano? Uh, <laughs> you can take one bite. I only took one bite. He took a bite. I ate the rest. The whole Salt. piece. Boricua. Oregano. How is it? Salt. Good? They're definitely not putting that olive oil on their stuff. No. Okay, I go in there now. sometimes and I just buy the sauce. And then take it home. A lot of people do that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we you just buy the, the sauce. Yeah, the, the marinara sauce and the tomato sauce. We sell it by the court. Wait, he agrees. He agrees what? Pizza Hut. <laughs> oh, stop, guys. Pizza no. Hut. Pizza Hut. It's got nothing on Wait, me. Where do you find these guys from? <laughs> it's not offensive. I don't even know who she is. <laughs> it is so delicious. Well, you got to try the regular pie, sweet. too. Try the yeah. regular pie. There's Let's a pepperoni stick with her. one there and a uh, plain Let's cheese. Let's stick with her. Is it good? So Dylan, how long have you been doing worst pizza job? Good? It's good? Excellent. I think Dylan said excellent. There you go, pepperoni. There yeah, you go. Pepperoni. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Got to bring that. That's like the number one ingredient oh. topping for a pizza in the world. Super John, we miss you too. And you, you have no else? idea the amount of food that's here. So send Abigail. You know what else is crazy um, that they have good there? Let's crazy. give me a slice of everything on the plate. Come, come this way. Give it to them. Give it to them. Really? I'm not Let's bring it around this way. Expert, but their French fries are delicious. P careful, Peter. Just pass it over to the guys and they'll... They'll do it. Peter you, you, wants a pizza, Pizza wants a piece. So Give him a piece. <laughs> you ever see? <laughs> Peter tried me on a piece. He's giving it a... He, <laughs> hey, <laughs> come here, Papi Chulo. Where you going? He's not going to take it all the way. Come here. They, they can wait. It's like taking it. Papi Chulo. What's a Papi Chulo? Should be the host first. 
You know, so the consistency funny. is always... That is a big slice of pizza. Yeah. Right here, give one to Peter because you saw him oh, grabbing... Yeah, he was trying. He was to eyeball your staff members, whoever has the pie. Here, Peter. Oh. <laughs> John, let's taste this. Let's see what this tastes like. Okay. I, oh, you, this is still you hot. You eat like me now? Yeah. You to, like fold it and oh take a bite. Oh, my God. Now, how do you eat a so pizza? Compare it. How, there you go. That's how you eat oh, it. That's, that's how you eat a pizza, baby. You from the Bronx? Well, part of Long Island. It's a totally uh, different South, uh, taste. Nassau pizza. County, Belmont, yeah. America. Oh. It's folding. You got to fold it. It's a, in Brooklyn, you get a, you get a sheet of wax paper for your slice when you walk up to the window. But it's a totally different taste. The regular pie no, and the Sicilian. Sure. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we I have used to. I tell you, I, I got to go for the Sicilian. We used to. Sicilian I'm just saying. No, but on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you get Sicilian, and Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, you eat the pizza. The sauce is different. The Dope. To hold your banana. Same sauce. No. Yeah. What's different? What's, what's different, different about it? The fact that it's upside down. The fact that it's upside down because it changes it. Changes it. Okay. Wow. It tastes more yeah. sauce as opposed yeah, to... Yeah, just cheese. like, you know, pasta is yeah. all different shapes, but they all taste different. Doesn't it taste, it taste different? Yeah. No, no, sauce. we got to keep tasting it. <laughs> but it's the same sauce. <laughs> I know same that. Exact it sauce, tastes yeah. different to me. All right, what do you think? Which one? Oh, this Sicilian that, Does that taste like Domino's? <laughs> Which one is that? The Sicilian? Oh, the Sicilian. She likes the Sicilian. I'm going to tell you something. From Jersey. Sicilian is on the money. That's a different animal. But this is not. This is really good. What do you think? It should bring Long you back Island. home, man. Brooklyn. What do you say, Mara? Now, the funny thing is. <laughs> That's why she doesn't understand the pizza. Everything tastes like Pizza Hut in New Jersey. <laughs> there you go. You ever eat in Jersey? I've never had it. I don't Unfortunately. Had yeah, me too. So. You don't want to go there. All right, Georgia, we're going to go to commercial break. Mm. When we come back? No, we're not. Not yet. What are we doing? Do you know how we used to do in the in the day? We used to buy two slices, right? And the soda. You and Georgia put. You used to put one slice on top of the other and double stack it. Mm. Remember that? I up. saw that in. We fold it up. Here they come with a knife and a fork. I'm like, nah. what the hell is that? And then it runs down your arm. Your favorite thing. Because you ever seen people take it and they start patting the oil With off the, the napkin? So what yeah, the hell is that? It's the flavor you're taking off. No, nah, man, it's got to go down the arm. arm. You got to lick the arm. Yeah, you found the guy true your to your shirt. heart. That's what she remembers because I had pizza once in the studio and I'm eating this all over the place. It's like on my arm. Pizza, mayonnaise, it's <clears> going down his arms. Yeah, he loves food. food. You gotta get that's how you eat it. Mm -hmm. Look at this food. Oh, my gosh. Ready I'm to dig we, not scared. Yeah. we haven't even started with the other stuff yet. Well, we're going to start that next. Nino's is not just about pizza. When we come back, we're going to share the rest what of the food at Nino's. It is Italian restaurant and pizza. We started with the pizza first. Now we're going for the food. We'll be right back. Cruise Planners, an American Express travel representative, has a tremendous reputation for quality, service, and very competitive pricing for all of your travel needs. As a Cruise Planners travel advisor, Paul Vadiano will help you discover exciting adventures around the world, from cruises to land tours and completely packaged vacations. Paul specializes in all types of travel and will create an unforgettable vacation, wedding, or event just for you. Find Paul at www.cruiseoptics.com, on Facebook, or by phone at 561-232-2626. We make your travel dreams come true. Science has confirmed that real health comes from raw, organic, and wild foods. Essentials is a complete program of five products to help your body function as nature intended. Premium Ancient Superfood Algae offers energy and stamina. Food-based digestive enzymes help prevent occasional heartburn and may reduce stress from processed foods and heavy metals. Our proprietary probiotics help support immune health, regulate bowels, and eliminate toxins. Improve your mood, mental clarity, focus, faster rejuvenation, and better sleep. Order now at eatessentialsnow.com. Essentials, life-enhancing ingredients in the palm of your hand. Eatessentialsnow.com. Ready, set, go beyond. I'm Jordana Foster. As a motivational speaker, trainer, and mindset coach, I understand the importance of positive energy and inspiring others to become the best version of themselves. With an emphasis on personal and professional growth and development, I help individuals, entrepreneurs, and organizations to succeed by addressing their limiting mindsets. Learn how to go beyond your limiting beliefs and maximize your individual strengths to unlock your true potential to thrive. Are you ready to go beyond to live your best life now? 
Contact me, readysetgobeyond.com or 305-753-6758. Hi, my name is Leslie Carmen, and I'm the founder from Carmen Care Laser here in Boca Raton. We've done so many treatments. We've treated people with severe back pain, knee pain. If your pain uh, is, has been there for so, so many years, often we just have a tendency to just believe that we're not going to get better. I had a bad injury with my knee, my left knee. And it is amazing after just three treatments. And even after the first treatment, I could tell a huge difference. We'd love to invite you to come see us and, and be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the Brooklyn Cafe TV show. And don't forget to like this video. And subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when we go live. We'll see you next time. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And we're back. And we're back. Oh my gosh, this food is absolutely delicious. Okay, so pizza, Nino's not only about pizza, right? No, not only about pizza. Yeah, I mean, you have all sorts of stuff going on here. I want to start with the sausage and peppers you got cooking there. Now, it's called what? That's Well, that's like a San Gennaro. San Gennaro. Yeah, it's like a San Gennaro style, sausage, peppers, and onions. It's like when you go to the festival in New York City, Manhattan. Now, do you, you remember the San Gennaro festival? No, but my mother, so that's her September. favorite, always. I didn't really remember that, you know? It was, it was huge. It's still, it's still huge. going on. Is it? It's still huge. We've been away yeah. from the UFO. No, it still goes on every September. It's do they still, September. they still do the thing with the, the, the Empire State Building does the Italian colors for the whole month, and uh, they wow. celebrate San Gennaro. And they have the, the statue, and they put the money on yeah. it still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I, yeah. I, had to, I had to take the money off the statue. And put it in the collection pit and stuff. I remember. Uh, Adelphi, you don't were want you, anything. Were you good about that? Or I was some of the money. No, you had, no you, <laughs> you had. To, you had no choice. You had to be good about that. <laughs> no, but nobody's looking. Peter, what's your favorite? All of it. Well, if I'm getting pizza, it's definitely the Sicilian and the 100. upside down pizza. Uh, the upside down Sicilian was something new for oh me. Oh my gosh! Phenomenal. I'm gonna definitely order it. Like you said, it was the secret side of the menu. Yeah, no, that's a non-menu item, so it's something that you have to be in the know. The upside down Sicilian. All right, now if you're watching or listening to our show, you are in the know. Order the upside down Sicilian at Nino's. They are on Powerline Road and Palmetto Park, right in the Barracosta Shopping Plaza. You can't miss it, and you have to stop by. You know, we were we just did a shoot over there at Daphne's at Health and Vitamin Concepts. Oh, okay. Yeah. We did a shoot. We're yeah. waiting to get that back as well. Hey, that's can, where they are. Can, did you know can that? We, can we make a deal? Sure. You can walk around the corner. We're going to do that. We w- I want people to say, I want the Brooklyn Cafe pizza. If and that will be... Down Sicilian? Yes. Down. And we're going to identify it and brand it that way. And what we're going to do is take our cameras and let's go and watch them make it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's no problem. Let's put it up. Can they, f- can they fight me for the rights to that pizza? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's already keep, been claimed. <laughs> you can keep all the rights, wrongs, and everything in between. But I think... Because it's not on the menu, you have to know it in the name, right? You have to know it. Yeah. So I'm going to put it out there every day. This meatball, it's like a pound of meat, right? It's the biggest. Each, each I, no meatball. matter what I say, it's not going to sound it's right. Not it's not sound the biggest right. meatball right. I've right. ever seen. Nino's got the biggest <laughs> balls in town. There you have it. Well, that's what you said. You like the balls. Your wife likes the I sausage. I second that so. motion. <laughs> it's the sauce. Yeah. When you and I first started doing these food segments years ago, yeah. And Freddie would always say, it's the sauce. It is the sauce. And I thought, what are you, you're crazy, but it's this sauce is amazing. Unlike any other sauce. Right? Unlike. Okay, so let's keep going. So we have meatballs that are huge, and we have... You guys want some lunch? You want some lunch? No, they're good. Okay. <laughs> what else do we have? We've got the chicken frances. Chicken frances. Delicious. Which is a staple. Uh, like the San Gennaro pepper, the, the sausage, peppers, and onions. we got the homemade meatballs. We got a little big ziti, and uh, that's about Mara it. Mara says today. the chicken yeah. tastes just like Chick Fil A, so. It's <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mara, it tastes like chicken. Where did Is that Mara everything? She's hiding out. She go? Mara, <laughs> you full? Hey, I just have headphones on. She doesn't hear us. What? What? Are <laughs> you full? Am I full? Does it yeah. taste like chicken? I'm not full. The chicken no, tastes like chicken. Tastes like Chick Fil A. <laughs> oh, I didn't taste it. I don't know. You should taste it. You should taste the chicken and yeah. taste the sausage. EJ, what do you think? It tastes not like Pizza Hut. 
<laughs> nice. EJ, you're, you're welcome at the restaurant. Don't Did you try this? Yeah. The sausage? Yeah. Unbelievable. Good. I have to say, you my next mic off? party, I'm definitely going to be catering so many dishes. And this is not just it also at Nino's. We do seafood, fresh seafood every day. We have lobster. We have... Uh, are you serious? Yeah, no, I'm very serious. And your portions we, we are take, tremendous. We are Sicilian also. We're Sicilian, so Sicilians are big in seafood. So we do What salads. time are you open to? We're open until 10 o'clock every day. You can go for dinner. He's right by the station. He is right near Daphne's. Yeah. Not too you, far. You might see me there tonight. You're going to be there tonight? You, you can't put this food in front of me and then let me go through the rest of the day and not have more. All right, more. so how did you start worldsworstpizza.com? Is this uh, what well, you did? Well, it's just is... worstpizza.com. Okay. I started it because when my wife and I moved down here, there's nothing like a New Yorker than when you move a New Yorker to Florida. All of a sudden, their accent gets 15 times worse than it would have been when they lived in New York. Not have you ever Freddy's? met those people? Have you heard Freddie's accent? Yeah, but like <laughs> most of them even put it on worse just because they think they're the only New Yorkers that have ever come to live in South Florida. What a novel idea. You don't have one. I've lost mine. Are I you go back home and I listen to my Where parents are you from? thinking, who had me? I'm from Long Island, from Syosset. He does not sound like he's from New well, York. Well, Syosset doesn't have a heavy accent. Neither no, we're, we're quite perfect. In the Brooklyn we're quite line. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> they have schools in education over there. I, I hear the Brooklyn not like the him. South Shore people yeah. here. Yeah. They, they have accents. You hear the Bronx in him? Yeah, my accent a little worse than his on yes. the South Shore. Who's in the North Shore? I look up. We're uppity. <laughs> but, so what happened is we came down. <laughs> and I, so I would ask these people I hear in the mall that walk around saying, you got pretzels here, bro? You got pretzels? <laughs> They would be like, oh, hey, you're from New York. Where, where's the best pizza around here? And they would start showing me these places. And I went inside, and I remember I called up my mom, and I said, Mom, I said, we might be coming back home. And she said, well, I said, I'm being very serious now. I can't <coughs> live here if this is the way the pizza's going to be. And then somebody said, well, have you tried Nino's? Well, you know, going back 20-something years ago. I said, no, where's Nino's? And I'm just thinking, oh, great. It's just going to be one of these other places where you walk inside. And I had the pizza, and I looked at my wife, and I said, hold on here. Like, this is, uh, there's no difference from you got home. this pizza. This was good pizza. So uh, we started to frequent there a lot. I didn't know Marco back then. Right. Um, and my son basically was growing up inside Nino's because it was the only place that we'd keep going. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to create a website to help everyone else avoid terrible pizza places. That's in a good idea. And then it just grew to the world. And then I slowly tamed it down because too many places were complaining that they were getting put out of business by, the, <laughs> you know, by a bad review. And oh, wow. I, yeah. we tried to change the concept a little bit. So now if it's really bad, we just don't even rank it, and so we only rank the good places. And Marco's come close to perfect. And uh, so we need to do bestpizza.com. Best that's true. Right? I agree. Nah, pizza, well, people would think that's an advertisement, right? You know, like I you, when you when you say you're the worst pizza.com in Google, and then the guy says it's one of the best, people are like, well, if he even likes it, we should try it out. He's there. from the right. Freddy School of Marketing. It sounds like. Yeah, you do the opposite you do and it works. The work. opposite yeah. and it works absolutely. It gets people's attention, and you get what you want out of it, but they don't realize what they're getting until they get it. This this guy. Kept me in Florida, basically. That's I know. It's all my fault. It's all your fault. Yeah, all now, Marcos, let me ask you a question. You've been running the pizza, the, the, the restaurant, how long? Since 2008, when my father retired. Okay. And were you living in New York before that time? Oh, yeah, Benson. I'm from Brooklyn. So you brought all the recipes from up there, well, all actually, the taste? my father was born in Sicily, so. Oh, so you already, this is like home family stuff? Um, the, the tomato sauce definitely is, yes. The tomato, tomato sauce. sauce is amazing. Yeah, no, I Did you keep sauce. his traditional of recipes? Course. No, I didn't change. I added some of my own things to it, but yeah, I kept all the core recipes intact. See, that's one of the things I find in Florida because so many family members leave and then the sister comes and the brother comes. Next thing, the pizza turns into a jelly donut. I mean, no. it begins to change. It's just it's crazy. <laughs> true, true. So you, it's always been this good. Yeah, if it's not broke, you don't fix it. That's it. Yeah, and it's wrong. always been like this. And when we go, I'm telling you, it's been years. I have vivid memories of running down the sidewalk chasing one child, nine months pregnant with another child. That's how 1992? long. 1994. That's how long we've been going to Nina's because I live right up the street. And their food has always been guiltily delicious. Guilty. So you ask how I, I just don't eat a lot. But I will eat a bite of everything that's here. Un You'll have to get you some food, Adelphi, because it is. Uh, would you like some lunch? These ladies, these people walk in, you want to eat? Lunch? They came to watch it, look at the gallery. We got food, too. My willpower is strong. You never know, you're walking into a radio show and you walk in this room, right? May you want Janice? It's going to fall. We are live art. Oh, my goodness. You're what? We're live art. We're live art. It is. It really is. <laughs> For the fame of art. So you can give it out. I think my mother's don't, favorite don't dish is the no, sausage They'll give you whatever you want. I just want to get it to them and so the that we can CD. get it because it's still warm. Coming back? Oh, she's serving you? Are you serving? What are you? I am serving. Oh, I, 
think and we're a full service. And we're a full service restaurant, right? Give here it to Mara Cafe. last. <laughs> Give it to Mara last. She's hiding. I think you guys scared her off. I'm Lara. I'm watching the Dexafit. Chicken is my life. Chicken is your life. Did you try the chicken? Yeah, yeah. This is chicken. Franchise, franchise, franchise. Yeah, What's the difference with the uh, franchise yeah. and Milanese? It's well, Milanese is breaded. It's like a cutlet. Don DeMarco, come get some food. It's from no Nino's Let's get in these Boca Raton, and... right on Palmetto Park and Powerline Road. Everyone wants to know Giovanni, where it is and what this is. Grab one of the trays and let's give it out. It is Nino's the Italian restaurant and pizza. Try. Second. And thank you, Gene, for bringing us the tablecloth so our, our table stays intact. Adelphi, do you live in the area? I live pretty close, yeah. So Point you need to try Nino's. Oh, I'm um, definitely. Have you ever tried Nino's? Nino's? No, I've never tried it. I'm going to try it right now. She's, she's thinking I about I it. I was trying to hold on to my willpower, but it's giving out very well. But you know, I mean, the yeah. sausage and peppers is not going to. Is that going to make. Not really gonna you can have protein. small bites. It's all protein. Yeah. Like, I took uh, a little right. bite of everything. Same thing with the chicken franchise. It's not really going to. It's not a heavy dish. No, you just have the small bites. Now, the Sicilian, no. upside down. Well, that's a well no, no, worth for eating a diet, the, though. Yeah. But well worth eating the whole piece. And if you don't it, do it often. It's definitely good to break a diet. Exactly. And it's definitely worth the cheat. If you're going to take the cheat, the upside down Sicilian, I'm telling you, you just got to go. Now, Marco, what is your favorite dish in your place? The number one My dish. My favorite dish? I, I, I'm a lamb chop guy. I love the lamb chops. You yeah, have lamb chops. We do lamb a gorgonzola chops, crusted yeah. lamb chop. Holy and, uh, smokes. And a red wine, uh, red wine reduction. That's out of this world. I mean, wow. I, that and the Zupa de Pesh. I go back and forth. Oh you, uh, you had this? Did you have his... Uh, the lamb chops? Lamb chops? Oh, I've never had the lamb chops now that he mentioned it. Oh, the lamb chops are amazing. It's like, yeah, it's one of my favorite things, for sure. The Holy smokes. I'm going to stick with the same, uh, same thing, different day of foods, but once I... Why do you do that? See, I don't, I like to change it up every day. Yeah. I will go through his menu yeah. and for the yeah. next 365 days, try one different thing every day. Every day, yeah. Well, everything I have tried is amazing. We always eat the chicken parm and the eggplant parm. My yeah. husband Those always asks them for yeah. like the combination, and they always make a combination. Yes. But Seriously? it's a family restaurant. You can Seriously? bring your kids, you can bring the parents, you can bring the grandparents. You have the same thing every time? My husband does. And what do you do? You have a, I usually you have a bite? You know how I eat. What, what's your dish, Don? What's yours? I don't usually ever order a dish. When what I go that? out, I never order. I order a salad, and then I share everybody else's. It's, it's a I strange thing. I something about the I salad. I definitely shake your head. Bites. Exactly. I take bites of everybody else's meal. And there's, there's seriously it's something wrong with you. Yeah, that, even I don't growing share up. food. You share food. No, I don't no. share food. Get your own. You remember, we had a, our first show, we talked about sharing food. Yes. And Freddie and Les, his other partner, said, yeah. we do not share food. Don't even reach for my french fry. Don't okay. anything. And someone actually reached for a french fry on a set for you. Oh, and, and I you stabbed went, them. And you said, I'll Craig get, you, a heart attack pieces, I'll get a fry you your own dish. french fries. Don't share my plate. <laughs> well, I, you know, when we sit down to eat, right? And I order, let's say, I don't eat french fries anymore. But they say, okay, let me get some french fries. Do you want French fries? If your answer is no, okay, <laughs> right. then no means no. Yes. Okay. Now, if it's maybe, then I already know what's going to happen. Gonna With Dawn, she says, no, it's okay, but she'll take and take and take. I want to take. <laughs> Jaja says it's a mom thing. But I did it even when I was growing up because my brother, I always used to eat off his plate. Off your other brother? Off my brother's plate, too. I think it, it's just like taste testing because you can't quite decide. You almost need a buffet. I don't like buffets either. So I love buffets. I don't like people touching my food, my hands. Who the hell's touching your food? The handles and the serving pieces. But if everyone has it, it means no one else is touching it, and then I can just share off the plate. But don't agree with how many jokes. Jaws on the floor. He, I'm gonna have a whole other website. Yeah. Buffets are the best. Like Crazywoman.com. The messier, the better. Yeah. My uncle had a pizza parlor in New York. You go with Purell. <laughs> See, he knows. Oh my God, <laughs> you you people with your Purell, Linda's the same way. Give me your hands. Give me your hands. Every time I walk into a restaurant, give me your hands. I own the rest. My uncle owned a restaurant in New York. He didn't know how to make pizza. He he got this from a guy who owned the money, whatever. He didn't know how to make any pizza, so he just come. Everybody get it the back. Let's know how. I was like twelve. The pizza slid off the. Oh, no. It slid off the pizza pie. It was so oily. It was like the oiliest pizza in the Bronx, and that's what we started selling—the oiliest pizza in the Bronx. Worstpizza.com. 
It would have. It would have won. Come on, it was enjoy. horrible. Come uh-huh. into the cafe, enjoy some lunch. We're here for another. Gosh, over an hour here until two o'clock today. Fourteen forty North Federal Highway. You can find us on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube, <coughs> Brooklyn Cafe TV. Jaja, you're going to take us to break. I am. We've known Jaja for an hour, and she's running the board. All right, Mara's <laughs> laughing. She she leaves her intern on the board. Oh, gee, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Cruise Planners, an American Express travel representative, has a tremendous reputation for quality, service, and very competitive pricing for all of your travel needs. As a Cruise Planners travel advisor, Paul Vadiano will help you discover exciting adventures around the world, from cruises to land tours and completely packaged vacations. Paul specializes in all types of travel and will create an unforgettable vacation, wedding, or event just for you. Find Paul at www.cruiseoptics.com, on Facebook, or by phone at 561-232-2626. We make your travel dreams come true. I got a guy. You need a guy? I got a guy. With vCard Global, all your contacts are in the palm of your hand. Never leave home without your business cards or brochures again. VCard is the ultimate marketing tool. No more printing cards or brochures. VCard fits in the palm of your hand and is always with you. VCard is a powerful networking tool that virtually promotes sharing and builds referrals for your business. VCard Global, the virtual business card. Hold your business in the palm of your hand. Contact Jennifer at J-E-N-N-G dot vcardinfo dot com. The world's most intelligent business card. I got a guy. J-E-N-N-G dot vcardinfo dot com. In this world of social media and cacophony of sound, how do you get noticed? How do you get heard? In a world of instant gratification, how do you find appreciation? It's time to be heard. Become a radiating magnet and allow the law of attraction to come fully into play. Being completely in the moment speaks louder than words and actions. It's time to become fully present. It's time to put Humpty Dumpty together again. Call or text 561-351-9134. Become your radiating self. Contact Clyde at 561-351-9134. Who's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in What time are you open for breakfast? 9 a.m. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Corner Porch on um, the beautiful Atlantic Avenue here in Delray Beach, Florida. Now, this place is tremendous. What else do we have? We've got the Nutella French toast. We have a, an omelet, we have a chicken sous vide. That's delicious. And this and is panini. And we have a panini sandwich. Wow, what a morning. Holy smokes, this is unbelievable. Southeast First Street is 6th Avenue. Excellent. Come on down and check out Corner Porch. Ready to dig in? We're ready to dig in. And don't be late because we got to get to eat. Thank you guys. Thank you. Welcome Thank you. again. Thank you. See you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, thank you for watching the Brooklyn Cafe TV show. And don't forget to like this video. And subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when we go live. We'll see you next time.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I guess we're on. You know what we need? We what? need more. Cowbells. You can't even find your cowbells because we've got napkins and plastic wrap and silverware. We're just eating here at the Brooklyn Cafe TV. We've got Nino's Italian Restaurant and Pizza from Boca Raton right on Palmetto Park and Powerline Road. So delicious. We had our contest of the Upside Down Sicilian, which we can now call the Brooklyn Cafe TV special because it's a non-menu item. You have to know to go into Nino's and ask for it versus the regular pie. Did we get a vote? Anyone? Anybody have Anyone their favorite vote, dish? Mara? She's on. We have the chicken. We have the chicken franchise. Right, that's because you like chicken. Meatballs, the upside down Sicilian, the sausage and peppers, and the baked ziti. The sausage and peppers is to die for. I'm telling but you. the favorite for me? What's your favorite? The square pizza. The upside down Sicilian, by far, don't even count calories. You at the whole piece, I ate the entire piece. I'm going to tell pieces, you, it's delicious. It. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing wrong with the pizza. The pizza's pretty good. The meatball, delicious. I see, you left like a chunk. Uh, the day's not over yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I graze, Adelphi. I take a little bite here and there between commercial break. But one of the employees of Nino's had a crazy freak accident. And you want to share with us what's going, what's on, going on and what people can do to help? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Girardi, he's been an employee of mine for six years. And uh, he's family, basically, now. And he had a slip and fall in a friend's house. He hit his head on the floor and had to have emergency brain surgery. He was in a coma for about two weeks, and he just came out of the coma this week. Uh, you know, he's doing well, uh, speaking, but really, you know, not making sense yet. But he's still in the healing process, and uh, there's a GoFundMe page for him. And uh, we're promoting it on our Facebook we just shared it on this show, so in the comments you can find the link to Joseph's GoFundMe page. And Adelphi, of course, the queen of marketing and networking, said to Nino's how. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a, a, the best way to get your name and to help with his family because you already have some huge <coughs> following. So make sure you're promoting in all your social media and websites and everything else so that people can know where to find that information. Of course. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's. What if we just came into the store? Is there something we can do if we walked in? I mean, cause well, I we have we do have a jar that we're collecting from up front as well. Okay. And uh, you know, we're just doing everything we can to help the family. So. Yeah. Any. Yeah. I mean, I knew the guy for years and years. He's so lovable, again. right? I mean, nicest kid. I mean, not kid. But I mean, young young guy. Young man. Yeah. Personality. Just you call and it's Joey. I mean, just. Yeah, it's not the same with without him there. Smile. Yeah, you know. For sure. It, it's extremely admirable that you consider your employees family. That's, I, I, that's a I huge do. I mean, thing to think about. My chef has been with business. me since 82. That's amazing. Holy smoke. And Peter, yeah. I have to thank you and all county for bringing Nino's to us and for eating as much as you do around town because you always bring us great food. <laughs> <laughs> so all county I mean, has a show. They're my favorite as far as Italian. I'm, I'm eating out a lot lately and, you know, the consistency. And you don't cross markets. So he always plays fair. He brings his favorite of... The type, right? So you had your favorite deli. You've got your favorite Italian. Greek. Who was your favorite deli? Uh, you, you mean the pastrami corned beef thing? Yeah. The, oh, the bagel uh, place, really, I should say. Well, Zingers is something new that I experienced. It's okay. also next to uh, Nino's. Um, so it might be between Ben's Deli and Zingers. It's, I have to try a few more dishes at Zingers. Um, I went to Zingers. I went to the fast food one because you had told me it was there. That store. He just yeah. opened. I spoke to Joe. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think Peter spoke to Gary, and he said... And Gary's a close friend. He said, this is what you do? Mm -hmm. Joe says, you have a radio TV show? I go, yeah, Joe. He goes, where have I been around? I don't know, but you guys should come on. I said, talk to Peter. So they said they'd be more than happy to come on and promote it. Gary's great. I told you my son used to work at Zingers in his first day. They said you him, never told me that. Who was My son was a busboy at Zingers when he was in high school. What was his name? Aaron. Is it Grover. still his name? That's still his name, oh, yes. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> and Gary. <laughs> and when you meet Gary, he's really funny. Gary is like I'm straight to face. Who he was. Gary doesn't smile a whole lot, and Gary sends him to Win Dixie to get a couple things and some elbow grease. So my son goes to Win Dixie, and he's going up and down the aisles, and he brings back paper towels, whatever That's Gary funny. sent him for. But he couldn't find the elbow grease. He was gone for like an hour. And he comes back, and he was really embarrassed. And Gary says, So did you get it? And he says, I don't know what to tell you, but I couldn't find the elbow grease. And Gary starts rolling on the floor. He's like, dude, he goes, that was just your first day on the job. That, that's <laughs> and funny. that is what Gary, Gary did to him. Gary and I competition with that. <laughs> I would send him to uh, the bakery in Publix or Winn-Dixie for a dough repair kit. 
<laughs> so, so you totally understand that story, and that was my son's first day at Zingers. Don, do you know, as a Jewish kid from Long Island, I'm going to make a bold statement here. <laughs> it's rather audacious. If you go to Nino's and they are serving their chicken noodle soup, you will not find a better chicken noodle soup, I think, in South really? Florida than at this Italian restaurant. Take me up on that challenge and we you'll see what I mean. We will take you up on that challenge. Oh, yeah. we were looking, you were looking for soup the other day when you were sick. Yep. Remember? I, we were I remember. Especially if you take a little of his Romano and put it just a dab into the soup. Is this what you do for a living, running no, restaurants? No, I don't. This isn't I'm even actually like a model, um, but I just eat on the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try to get lentil soup. Uh, the lentil's really the lentil good. Soup yeah. is phenomenal. Try the, the chicken noodle next time. Chicken noodle. I'm, this is the Jewish side of the table. Oh, is that noodle. what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a transplant. I'm a big chicken noodle fan. We're going to convert, Freddie. Like, you know, Catholics like chicken noodle, too. You do? Of course. We'll have to check that I'll out. Buy it for you. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so oh, Kenny, your show stuff. is tonight. What time is your show tonight? Oh, tonight we have a show. Uh, what day of the week? He's going to check his watch. <laughs> it's, it's, it's five. It's the weekend already. It's, it's Friday. Friday. It's at it's five. Friday. Friday. Yeah. Is that five thirty? Five thirty show. Who's going to be on? Um, I think it's Doctor Osman, if I'm pronouncing it. Um, Osman. Osman. Five thirty. Can find it on WANN ninety five three FM fourteen seventy AM, and of course on the All County Healthcare website. If you're looking for any home care, if you feel a family member or a friend is not living up to their uh, activities of daily living, things they normally might have done, speak to your mm -hmm. physician. See if. Home care, therapy, physical, occupational therapy, or even nursing care might be needed to strengthen and improve to gain prior function. Call Peter. Oh, let's call What's Peter. your phone number? You can call me personally. I, you use me as a resource if you're not sure. I might be able to advise you at 561-445-0435. It's all county health care. And if you want Peter to try your restaurant, since he seems to be frequenting restaurants around the South Florida area. Because he has a big appetite. So big Let appetite, and they come to you. I think you're delivering now too, right? Yeah, we do. We do delivery. We do catering. Uh, you know, we have it all. You can check it out at uh, www.ninosaboca.com. Ninosaboca do you have chicken noodle soup tonight? I don't know. I need to. I need to find out. We gotta see if there's. We gotta see if they get a chicken. The happy hour special. Is there a happy hour special? You have a daily. Uh... Well, we are doing a daily uh, special. We have meatball Mondays, twenty percent off on anything with meatballs on it on Monday. Really? Uh, we have a two for Tuesday uh, with the pizzas, twenty five dollars for two pies. And you have seafood at this place, we right? We do. We do. And we have lobster. Pops. We have shrimp. And, Jeez, uh, Louise. We have fresh fish every day. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, Linda, 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 I know you're watching. You can go there for dinner. You can watch your calories if you want, or you can be as bad as you want. You know, I could do you both. You can watch them. Just well, don't count the them. There you go. Just don't count them. Don't count There's them. There's a gym opening up next. Especially week with that upside down. Right. LA Fitness is right there, and stop yeah. by Daphne and Health and Vitamin Concepts while you're over there. She's like family to us as well. Oh, they've been my neighbors for years. Yeah. Daphne is yeah. amazing. Nice place. Adelphi is staying for the next hour. I'll hang out for a little bit. All right, Adelphi's going to hang out with us. We've got Dr. Sam with us. Dr. Maybe Sam. Maybe but I don't know, Mar. We're going to get what's going on with you. We need the vote, whether it was the best pizza, was it the regular pizza or the upside down Sicilian? I think I had better pizza in New Jersey. Check out Nino's. <laughs> we'll be back in two and two. Just, she loves digging me FM, that one. 1470 AM. Ignore her. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Well. I am crunchy because knowledge is power. Crunchy is a revolutionary line of safe and high performing toxin free cosmetics that are redefining beauty. You no longer have to sacrifice your health for your beauty or your beauty for your health. Be conscious about what are in your cosmetics and how they affect your body. Contact me at 703-509-2592 or explore at crunchywithani.com forward slash Liz Sant, L-I-Z-S-A-N-D-T. Again, it's 703-509-2592.
uh, fresh muddled watermelon juice, champagne, and a little cocktail. The restaurant has been here since 1993. Started as a gelato store and in 1997 we became a full service restaurant. And over the years, Kathy and Lena Rosa has definitely become a nice mom. Love being part of our Six community. Being proud of being amazing people that we're just very thankful that we're able to have a great day. We'll see you Thank you for listening to the Del Monte Radio Show, teaching you the opposite of everything you've been taught so you can obtain the results you've never obtained. Join us seven days a week. Can't get enough? Visit DelOnTheRadio.com to listen to the Del Monte Radio Show, access past show podcasts, and join the conversation. Opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. AM 1470, with more of what you need to know. Don't miss Travelers 411, with Stephanie Abrams, each Sunday night from 5 to 7 p.m. On AM 1470, WNN. Talk 1470 is WWNN Pompano Beach and 95.3 FM W237BD Boca Raton, the health and wealth radio network. Staying healthy is difficult. What nutritional supplements should you take? What foods are best for you? What health practitioner should you see? You've got health questions, I've got health answers. From heartburn to hemorrhoids, pain to pimples, carpal tunnel to the common cold, gluten to gallbladder, and gingivitis and all points in between. I'm Dr. Bob Martin. Tune in to my Sunday talk show at 10 o'clock on Talk 1470 WNN. Homeowners, would you like to save money each and every month? Of course you would. We all want to save money, but how? By calling Debbie at I Will Advisors, that's how, and have her review your homeowner's policy. Most homeowners never review their policy, but it should be reviewed every year. You commercial property owners, same goes for you. So what are you waiting for? Call Debbie at I Will Advisors and start saving money. 954-753-8080. 954-753-8080. If you had any idea how absolutely insane the stock market is. Unconventional wisdom is sweeping the nation, and you are next. You need to stop being dependent on a paycheck. The Dell Romsey Show is on WNN, Mondays at 5, Tuesday through Friday at noon. If you're not happy with your investments, if you've ever tried the stock market and haven't done well, hop in the car and get to Online Trading Academy. Online Trading Academy's pro investors show you how they find the right investments. Learn current Wall Street skills about stocks, options, futures, forex, even Bitcoin. See how market timing works and how money is made in up, down, and sideways markets by using their patented rules-based strategy. It helps find the right investment and limit the risk. The instructors at Online Trading Academy are certified, currently trade, and are profitable. They show you how they invest every day. Call now for a pair of tickets to a free half-day class at Online Trading Academy. Classes are all over Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, Jupiter, and Port St. Lucie. Call Online Trading Academy now. Call 954-668-2510. 954-668-2510. The following message is sponsored by the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation, the Florida Association of Broadcasters, and this radio station. 
Natural disasters can be unexpected and devastating to your home or property. If your home or property is damaged and needs repairs, it's important to use only Florida licensed contractors. Remember to check their references, get everything in writing, and don't pay up front. To verify your contractors are licensed, contact the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation online at MyFloridaLicense.com. That's MyFloridaLicense.com. What you want to know. What you need to know. Talk 1470. WNN. Cruise Planners, an American Express travel representative, has a tremendous reputation for quality, service, and very competitive pricing for all of your travel needs. As a Cruise Planners travel advisor, Paul Vadiano will help you discover exciting adventures around the world, from cruises to land tours and completely packaged vacations. Paul specializes in all types of travel and will create an unforgettable vacation, wedding, or event just for you. Find Paul at www.cruiseoptics.com, on Facebook, or by phone at 561-232-2626. We make your travel dreams come true. Science has confirmed that real health comes from raw, organic, and wild foods. Essentials is a complete program of five products to help your body function as nature intended. Premium Ancient Superfood Algae offers energy and stamina. Food-based digestive enzymes help prevent occasional heartburn and may reduce stress from processed foods and heavy metals. Our proprietary probiotics help support immune health, regulate bowels, and eliminate toxins. Improve your mood, mental clarity, focus, fast rejuvenation, and better sleep. Order now at eatessentialsnow.com. Essentials, life-enhancing ingredients in the palm of your hand. Eatessentialsnow.com. Ready, set, go beyond. I'm Jordana Foster Ready, as a motivational set, speaker, beyond. trainer, and mindset I'm Jordana coach. Foster I understand as a motivational the importance speaker, of positive energy and, and inspiring others to become the best version of themselves. With an emphasis on personal growth and development, I help individuals, entrepreneurs, and organizations to succeed by addressing their limiting mindsets and focusing on their strengths. Learn how to go beyond your limiting mindset and become the best version of yourself. Learn how to go beyond your limiting mindset and maximize your individual strengths. Learn how to go beyond your limiting mindset and addressing their limiting mindsets. Learn how to go beyond your limiting beliefs and maximize your individual strengths. Are you ready to go beyond? True to live your best life thrive. now, contact Are you ready me. to go beyond? Ready, set, to live go your beyond. best life now, or contact me. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. <laughs> Well, it's 1 o'clock, and the Brooklyn Cafe is open for business. The team is ready to serve you a huge portion of fun for lunch. So let's break open that lunch pail and unwrap that sandwich you brought, take a front row seat in the Brooklyn Cafe, and get ready to enjoy the humor and hot topics. It's time to get a healthy serving of feel good and happy soup to help your day go easy and enjoy your break with others around you. Your hosts, Dawn and Freddie S., are ready to talk about food, health, dating, or just plain dream making. The feel-good food you need to help that bagel go down nice and smoothly. If you have a story to share, anything that happened at work, play, a movie review, restaurant critique, or just a coincidental thing that happened to you today, call in toll-free 888 888- 565-1470 right now. So sit back and enjoy your lunch break at the Brooklyn Cafe and let Dawn and Freddie S. get your happy juices flowing. Oh, wait. my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, this is very loud. Um, I am Mara, aka Frederick, today, and we are here on August 20. I have no idea. August 20, I have no it's idea, just 2018. It's the 24th. And I am Mara, aka Soprano, aka Freddie, for the day. Freddie, for the day. Freddie is here. He's just sitting on the. I'm couch. stuck in the bathroom! <laughs> <laughs> Don't. You're stuck in the bathroom, you need a key? Stuck in the bathroom. I get up, this is what happens when you get up and you make a cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. You have to talk and I'll like voice over. I get a what? You have to talk and I'll like lip it. Well, she You're gonna what? Lip, lip it. it. Yeah, like mouth. You know, you've is been that doing a song? Too many like, voice, you've been doing too many music videos. That's like, like a song called Whip It. Lip It. Lip It Good. <laughs> oh Sorry. my God, he put the camera on me. Why put the camera on me? Please? Because the camera should be on you. No, it's not on you. Happy Friday at the Brooklyn Cafe put it on TV. Ladies. Do you know that song was the 50th anniversary of Let It Be that came out with Mariah Carey and John Lennon? Let It Be wasn't done with Mariah Carey and John Lennon. It was the redo, the 50th anniversary of. Of the redo? Uh. That was the redo. Oh, I didn't oh. know that. See, teach you something new every day. Did you see where Paul McCartney went back to London where he grew up with the Beatles and they went to the house where he wrote most of the hit songs? And the people that lived there do not know, did not know that that was the McCartney's house until he showed up. And they walked in there and the whole neighborhood, thousands of people showed up at the house. And they had the biggest party. You ever seen that? With the I guy with not. the karaoke? Isn't um, it amazing when you think that everyone has a story and everyone came from some place and not everyone came with a silver spoon and they worked their way up to become successful in what they do and who they are. You should see, he had this little house. I think it had a two bedroom house, it was small. See? And he grew up to be one of the most famous artists in the history. Kind of like Oprah. Yeah. Oprah. Kind of like. Yeah. Why? Wasn't she poor? I don't know. All I know and the, the Oprah, woman she that likes wrote, bread. <laughs> the woman that wrote Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling. Yeah. yeah. I she was no very idea. poor. Bread. 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 Like, carbs. Flat I bread. I like bread. Well, let me tell Pita you about bread. the carbs we had on our first hour. We had Nino's Italian restaurant and pizza. Oh my gosh. I had three Amazing. bites. I ate the whole piece. I saw that. I, I ate, ate the, the whole, whole piece. piece. I haven't had a piece of Sicilian pizza probably since before my mother put me on Weight Watchers, which is why she probably I just put noticed me on Giovanni's Watchers. falling asleep. He must have had too much pizza. Too much pizza, but we had the upside down Sicilian from Nino's. It is a non menu item, but go into Nino's in Boca Raton there on Barracosta Way and Powerline, Powerline and Palmetto, right where Zingers is and Health and Vitamin Concepts. Say hi to Daphne. Go into Nino's and ask for the upside down Sicilian pie. No. The Brooklyn, ask for Cafe, the Brooklyn Cafe TV. Pie. There you go. Ask for the Brooklyn special. Cafe TV special. Now he's, he's listening. He says he's going to be listening on the way back. It was delicious. Unbelievable. The meatballs. You love the sausage. I know you just took a bite. The meatballs, the chicken franchise. We've got so much food here. If you're in the area, come on down for leftovers. Otherwise, the crew is taking it home. Now, this is where Daphne's place is? Yes, right around the corner. On the corner. I mean, uh, on, oh, the other side, on the okay. other side of the sidewalk. Okay, he said to come on down, let's shoot a commercial down there. They're going to show us how they make that upside banana boat. Upside banana boat. Yeah. And they had, Dan. have an employee who has been with them for six years who had a freak slip and fall accident and he hit his head. He was in a coma that he had emergency brain surgery. And there is a GoFundMe page to help Joseph in his medical bills and recovery. And it is posted on our link on this show as well as on the Nino's Facebook page. So if you can help out. This family, he's a young guy and he can't be at work and he's just trying to recover, get back. See, you never know, which is why yesterday's show was so pertinent. Why? Because you never know what's going to happen. So get your affairs in order, get the paperwork done. So you and know what? You are prepared should an unforeseen, God forbid, accident occur. Right, that's that's true. it. Let's true. get it together. All See, right. I can tie it all in together. Now, today we have a special guest that I got to meet on set. She yes. was doing a deal with Tommy from South Floor Mixes. And she came on there and the woman scared me half to death. <laughs> and she was talking about all sorts of stuff, which we'll get into. But I was so impressed with her delivery. I said, you know, you come up to the cafe and check it out. Do you know that night I was in my car and my car defaults to WNN. When I turn it on the radio, the radio just defaults to NN. And I'm listening to this woman's voice and I'm thinking, I'm listening to NN. Who is this? Because I normally know most of your hosts on the night and what the shows are. And she's talking. and I'm like, wow, she's amazing. Her delivery is incredible. And I was really kind of bummed out when they asked you a question because I wanted to keep hearing your response. And then he went to commercial break. 
And now I know why people get annoyed when we go to commercial break, because I wanted to hear you talk more. Yeah, but, yeah, but you listen to the rest of the conversation. But I listened to the rest of the conversation. Yeah, he did the right thing. He did the right thing. And then Freddie said, we're going to have Dr. Sam on Friday, so I'm really excited. So write this number down, because you want to call him. 888-565-1470. You can find us on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube at the Brooklyn Cafe TV, 95.3 FM and 14.70 AM. We've got Dr. Sam Mar, you hanging out with me today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> does, it, does it make you feel a little uncomfortable that it's me and not Freddie? Not at all. Oh, I'm okay. all good. Good. Makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're doing a great job. And we have Adelphi with us from Adelphi. Is it networking? Adelphi networking. Adelphi, and she is the queen of networking. She sits here and had a great idea for Nino's, right? She's always thinking, this woman is always thinking on her feet. And we've got Dr. Sam. And the unique thing about Dr. Sam is she's a child psychiatrist not psychologist, and there are very few child psychiatrists in our area, so welcome. Thank you, I'm so excited to be here, and it's a pleasure. And your practice is where? So I've got one practice in Oakland Park, and I've got another practice in Boca Raton, so very close by, and I treat children, adolescents, and adults, and I love what I do. And how long have you been doing this? Oh my God. I don't know how many years, but I've been doing it for quite some time. And she's and a cane, so I always I tell you, totally Freddie, it is all about the you. It's you know, all about the you. one day I'm you. going to glue your fingers together. <laughs> okay? Because that looks like a giant It's all about post. the you. It's a giant goalpost, <laughs> exactly. I know. The it's you. The, it's the you. You and you and the you. Ju- she's a giant hurricane fan. Yes. Now, how did you meet Tommy? How did I meet Tommy? That's a good question. I don't know exactly. Don't I met him at a network. I, I think I met him at a SoFlo networking event, I want to say. Did you, did you actually go to I a actually did. I went yeah. to an event, and it was absolutely fantastic. And we met through uh, another colleague, I believe, David. I can't remember his last name off the top David, of my head. Uh-huh. Um, and Tommy is just a vivacious personality and true pleasure to be around. And then I, I said, he said, you want to come and be on the show? And I'm like, absolutely. So it was great. And her practice is is in Fort Lauderdale? Yes, right, in Oakland Park, right off of Oakland Park Boulevard. And I've got another office in Boca Raton. So I love Where it. Where in Boca are you? Right now in Royal Palm Place um, is my location. Right near the studio. Yeah. Royal Palm Place is where Segovia? Uh, Sego- Sego- right across the street from Barbara's Place. I know. What's the name of that? Sequela. Sequela. Absolutely. <laughs> That's where she is. That's where I met uh, Dan. What's his name? As Adam Sandler. Over there? Yeah, he hangs out there all the time. Yeah, there's so much we talk about all the time. We're back to school. It's not easy to be a kid these days. And I've got kids that are grown. You've got kids that are grown. And I've got a grandchild. The world of social media and bullying. And we've even talked to our interns about it, right? You guys are already older dealing with the social media. Imagine what it would be like now to have social media at eight years old. Oh, well, I was young when social media came. You weren't eight. You weren't using it. Right? You weren't yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I was. I was using How old were you using eight? it? I had I had aim I had I was oh. I was young like I I feel like when I I feel like I was like 9 or something like that How about like MySpace my yeah, I used my I remember my kids. No, on like MySpace. I was really young using those things, and like I would get like random messages from people. Like I remember them clearly. I think the bullying is so hard. Yeah. Do you work with a lot of that back to school? The bullying, the cyber bullying. Or? Unfortunately, yes. And you know, cyber bullying has become a global phenomenon that is just affecting youth a- across the world. And the sad part about it is that our children, adolescents, are communicating with strangers sometimes who are treating them in such maladaptive ways that they internalize these feelings and um, develop poor self-esteem as a result of this cyberbullying and, and bullying. It, it's awful. The self-esteem piece. And Adelphi, you sat here and said, I'm not going to eat the pizza yeah. because it's willpower. I mean, think about these kids and self-esteem and what's going on. And they get invited to a party or not get invited to a party. And all these things are posted on Facebook. You and I even see all these networking pieces, right? And they pick and choose the best pictures and the best that, so everyone knows who's there. And when someone's not there, I get a reason why. Oh, you know, that one was supposed to be there, but she was sick, and I get, you get, even as adults, we're getting excuses. Well, I think also, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and I'm just, just shocked that body image awareness starts so early. I don't remember, for me, being that young and just thinking about my external it just didn't exist. I was concerned with other things in my life. So, a- it's ab- shocking. 
Absolutely. I, unfortunately, there's an image that's portrayed on, on in the media and, and just in general where girls and, and young women are supposed to look a certain way and be a certain way. And, and the same thing for men and, and young boys. They're supposed to look a certain way and be a certain way. And these stereotypes, unfortunately, affect children because they have to create this sense of self and then portray this sense of self to the whole world through social media, which isn't necessarily who they really are. So they create these false identities and then portray them through social media to the whole world and then feel like they've got to be this false sense of self. Do you know what I'm then, trying to say? What, yep. Okay, let me ask you a question. Well, Why is about, it that yeah. 13 and 14s and 12s, all of a sudden they want to be 21, they want to have makeup, they, you know, they go on, on, on different pages like Facebook and everything else, they take a picture, and there are filters now, right? Well, you can make yourself look like Santa Claus if you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is the rush? If you're 13, act 13. Why do you got to be 19? Why is it that all of a sudden you got to look like Miss America? You got to have all this attention. It's the media. And you're looking, yeah, but all you're doing is making a recipe for damage. I mean, there's a lot of damage going on. And then I asked you this question at the studio. Why aren't the parents doing something more about this? So it's unfortunate because there's this notion that the parents may or may not be doing something about it. And in the vast, vast, vast majority of cases that I see with children and adolescents, the parents are actually always doing something about it. They're always trying to help their children and their adolescents. But what's pr the problem is, is that whereas we used to play on the playground and we used to see, you know, have fun face to face on the playground with, with our peers, their social life is truly online. So if you take away their phone, if you take away their access to internet, you've really kind of stripped away their social life. So it's not that parents per se are, are not involved and, and not aware, it's that they've created these identities that really they can't follow their kids everywhere, otherwise we'd be following them anywhere where there's access to the internet, which is, 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 is everywhere. It's really, it's changed so much, it's difficult. I remember when my kids went to college and I joined Facebook. And I said, I'm joining Facebook and I need access to all of your accounts at school if you want money. Mm -hmm. And they said, no. I said, then we don't pay. It's mm -hmm. very simple. We get access to your bank accounts. We get access to all the school, all the paperwork at school that we talked about yesterday, access to your account on school, your grades I don't need access to, but everything, if you want us to still fund you, they weren't happy. But that was what we did because I needed to be able to track them enough that there was accountability when they were there where they were and we were here. And people thought, you can't, they, and they said, you can't hover, you can't be a helicopter parent like that. I said, I need some parameters and guides. I need yeah, but something. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I wasn't okay. there helicopter. I, I don't want to be a helicopter. I know. You know I don't want to be I just wanted them out of harm's way. Well, hold on, what about responsibility? What about accountability? You know, you're a mom, right? Yes. How many kids you got? Two. You ever notice, I remember my son got into a fight in school. It was the only fight Freddie ever had in school. And he'll, he'll, he'll tell you the truth. And they gave him three, two days of detention for having this fight in school. I went to the school, I spoke to the principal, I said, give him five days. And he said, five days? I said, yeah. I said, your way is your way. Now he's gotta pay my, not my tax. So he went and told Freddie, you're gonna spend five days. He said, wait a minute, we agreed on two. Yeah, but your dad said to do three more. So he came up to me, he said, why? I said, that's your penalty pay to him. What about what you did to me? What did I do to you? What did you do to me? I must not get through to you because fighting is not allowed in this house. And I made him pay the five days. Where is the accountability? Why is that no longer part of the equation? So I think that accountability is actually a very good point that you're bringing up. Um, accountability in general is a good point. There's this notion now that parents use punishment more so than rewards, mm -hmm. okay? And when I speak with parents and they're having difficulties with their children and their adolescents, some of which is 100% normal, it's a tough age to deal with. But when I speak with them, they say, you know, I try and punish my child, I take away their internet, I take away their phone. Um, you know, my even seven-year-old is misbehaving, he's getting into arguments at school, <laughs> or my 14-year-old got a detention. I remind parents that you have to do certain things for your kids. You gotta provide food, you gotta, gotta provide clothing, you gotta provide shelter, and your number, number one priority as a, as a parent is to provide safety for your children. Everything else is a privilege. 
And there's this notion in our minds that we have to give children the newest phone, the newest games, the newest whatever. Those are all privileges. And if you change the mindset from your children to I'm punishing you when you do something bad to instead you get a reward when you do something good, all of a sudden children feel a responsibility and want to earn these great things. They want to earn a new phone. They want to earn even new sneakers, the simplest things. So if you take the responsibility off of the parent and say it's a punishment and you put the responsibility on the child and give them the opportunity to earn something, all of a sudden they develop that accountability that you're talking about. So that's what's key in my mind, is teaching them how to earn the, something. But do the parents know this or do they have to be educated? Well, it goes back to positive reinforcement. It's like yes. education 101 and I don't know how you grew up, I bet you grew up the same way where you had to earn what you had. You had chores, you had responsibilities. We had a chore chart when I was growing up and my kids too. They had those and they had to earn things. So when they were bad, I could take my daughter's toys, dollhouse and everything away. You know what happened? She got worse until we reversed it. Mm -hmm. And now she's a teacher and one of the, her mentor teachers said, when you're working with the kids, we take points away. She says, it's not working. I said, why don't you try this? Why don't you try creating the star instead of taking the star away? Mm -hmm. And every time the class does something good, they get another line for the star. Amazing how, how, how the whole old, class how, turned how around. How old were your kids when they started working? Working or doing stuff around the house? No, working. I went to work with my father in the construction company. I was nine. Yeah. They, didn't, they were doing their chores around the house. I said, if you're old enough to change your clothes, you're old enough to do your laundry. My Did friends you were an allowance? horrified. No. Never had an allowance. They had to earn it. I never had, I don't even know what it was. I remember my kids telling me, Dad, what's the allowance? I said, what is that? <laughs> I used what to make my allowance? kids do laundry when they were in middle school. Can I tell you my friends were horrified? Why? How, how could I make my kids do Child laundry? Slavery, I said, a lot of parents I said, they're Child slavery? <laughs> Basically, my you're son's, making your kids work. My son's changing his clothes three times a day and putting in a pile. I'm not washing them. If he can change his clothes, he can I wear think. them. If you can go on a date, you can wash your own clothes. The other thing I wanted to touch on is, you ever heard the saying, I'm not your friend, I'm your parent? Yeah. yeah. Because parents want to be their kids' friend. When we got to come back from commercial break. Let's talk about that. Where are we going? We're going to commercial break. I don't know. You staying over there? I kind of like it. You like it over there. <laughs> I got to see the Old school. 888-565-1470. Join our conversation, and we will be right back. Hi, my name is Leslie Carmen, and I'm the founder from Carmen Care Laser here in Boulder. We've done so many treatments. We've treated people with back pain, pain, pure pain uh, is, is in there for so long. We've done so long. Our professional team specializes in finding the best alternative laser therapy treatments for your pain and conditions. Do you suffer with chronic pain, post-traumatic injury, or simply looking for the benefits of cell rejuvenation to the skin? Schedule a consultation today to understand how photo-rejuvenation can help reduce your symptoms, reduce, or even improve. And it is amazing after just three treatments. Give us a and even after the first treatment, I could tell a huge difference. We focus on treating you who has a disease, not a disease that defines who you are. Contact Carmen Care Laser Therapy today, 561-405-9577 or CarmenCareLaser.com. I got a guy. You need a guy? I got a guy. With VCard Global, all your contacts are in the palm of your hand. Never leave home without your business cards or brochures again. VCard is the ultimate marketing tool. No more printing cards or brochures. VCard fits in the palm of your hand and is always with you. VCard is a powerful networking tool that virtually promotes sharing and builds referrals for your business. VCard Global, the virtual business card. Hold your business in the palm of your hand. Contact Jennifer at jenng.vcardinfo.com, the world's most intelligent business card. I got a guy, jenng.vcardinfo.com. Hey Dawn, do you know what CBD is? What is CBD, Freddie? CBD is a cannabidiol. My goodness gracious, I'm Puerto Rican and I can announce that. <laughs> cannabidiol, which is found in the hemp plant. CBD can help 
regulate your mood, improve your sleep, reduce inflammation, and you know what? It even increases immunity. Did you know that our internal systems are already made to receive the CBD? It's made of natural botanicals without any psychotropic effects. Do you know what that is? I have no idea what that means. It means you can get healthy without getting high. That's right. Now, people come to the studio, we give them CBD, and what's the first thing they ask me? Can I drive home? I said, did you drive here? <laughs> yes. Well, then you're going to drive home. So if you want CBD and the experience to feel better, reducing anxiety, what do you got to do? Give them a call at 561-674-7446. It is the number one legal and leading CBD company in the United States. Safe for all ages. Where do you visit, Freddie? You visit LiveLoveCBD.com. LiveLoveCBD.com. Tell them Dawn and Freddie sent you. Welcome to the Brooklyn Cafe, where every day is a new adventure. If you'd like to join Don and Freddie S. at the cafe, give them a call at 888-565-1470, toll free. Come on in or call to share a thought for the day and get all the information you need to help your business grow. That's 888-565-1470. Let's reopen the cafe doors. Now, back to Don and Freddie S. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the Brooklyn Cafe TV show. And don't forget to like this video. And subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when we go live. We'll see you next time. Yeah, we need and more cowbell. Oh, I need a working cowbell. And we're back at the Brooklyn Cafe TV. Wow, what a week. It's like the last half hour of our Friday show. I, get, I love what we get to do. We are able to connect so many people. We've had parties in here every day this week. I'm exhausted. We, and I wonder why I'm so tired every night I go home. I think my hormones are out of whack. And then Jean reminds me. She said, Tuesday, you were on air for three hours. And you had a party. And then yesterday you had 20 people and food and a caterer. She says, no wonder you're tired. I said, oh, maybe I'm just tired because I'm you just tired. You need Geritol. Remember Geritol? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I need Daphne. You need a Daphne talk. I need a Daphne pickup. We've got Dr. Sam with us, and Mara has move seats. Yes. But we were talking about, <laughs> as are we parents or are we friends? Are you your parents' friends or are you a parent? Okay. And who reminds who of that? What's our phone number to call in? 888-565-1470. Let us hear what you got to say. And don't say, oh, they're wrong, and not call in and tell me why. How's that? Call in, write in. You can find us on Facebook, Periscope, or YouTube. Or Anybody manning the... Uh, I don't right. know if anyone's manning the social media. It looks I'm like manning you're manning it. At the time, it. So I'm manning it. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> I'm manning it. We've had eight people here, and I'm manning uh, Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. But what is it? Are we? Should we be parents, or should we be our friends? So I think that there's a fine line between being a parent and, and being a friend. And the truth of the matter is, is, first and foremost, your job is to be a parent. But the similarity between being a parent and being a friend is when you can have an open line of communication. And with friends, you want to have an open line of communication. And with parents and children, you also want to have an open line of communication. And that's where the line gets a little bit blurred. A parent needs to know how to keep an open line of communication while disciplining and um, doing positive reinforcement at the same time with their children. And ultimately, if you can balance that and juggle that, then that's effective parenting. I think that's the hardest thing is everyone's so quick to take things away. Mm -hmm. You take your phone away, you take your iPad away, you take their connection to the world away. But we're the ones that gave it to them. <coughs> mm -hmm. right? We're the ones that have fed into this obesity epidemic as parents. We, it's this gluttony of they want, but there's the difference between needs and wants. And right. We talked about that. Yeah, we talked about the difference between we, needs and wants and what is a parent you're obligated to do for your child and how everything else would be considered a privilege and the child needs to earn those privileges um, and reminding your child of whether you earned it or not. And if you did earn it, then you give them something, positive reinforcement, and if they didn't earn it, then they just don't get it rather than taking things away, which is much less effective than, uh, than continuous positive reinforcement. Oftentimes, I give um, my parents an example of actually uh, gambling in, in a slot machine. So if you pull the trigger, you pull the lever for a slot machine, right? So nothing's going to come out, right? Makes you want to pull it again, pull it again, pull it again. And then something comes out, right? And you have that positive reinforcement. You're like, okay, I want, I want, I want, I want to pull it again. Okay, and that intermittent positive reinforcement happens over and over and over again. And that same 
positive reinforcement is what you want with your child. The difference between a slot machine and a child is you don't want to do it intermittently initially. You want to do it on fixed intervals over and over again. Every time you do something good, the child gets rewarded. Every time you do something good, the child gets rewarded. Because if you don't do it that way, you get a temper tantrum, which is not what you want. <laughs> Sounds like gambling is anonymous. But it's funny because we talked about it, and I remember with the kids, and we were told every two times or whatever it is you exactly it, and we would give them a goal at the end of the week if you have seven stars or ten stars you get a day with mommy or you get a time with daddy where, it, do, you, where do you get the well is this a real thing this was and it wasn't a tangible you, give me option do you it hear was, this it was more of a, a time yeah it was you get to go and get, she agrees you get to go spend this the day scary. with mom alone you go to lunch it wasn't a, a toy it wasn't a, a tangible thing because then all we're doing is giving into this but then as they got used to that number at the end of the week then the number grew mm -hmm. because then they right. say all right i can do 10 good things but i can do 15 really bad things so then it became more of what was in this is like this is like parenting chess you're playing i went I didn't do any of that. But he's what? Special ed. What it, do you want from me? This is what it was like. Are you serious? It's positive reinforcement. I didn't do it's this star me. stuff. Gio stars. was noisy in school. It says, okay, you got you to gotta stop. And he couldn't, so I created a button. I said, when you're going to talk, rub this button just to give him something. So it's the to, same thing. Not the same thing. I didn't the stars and all this stuff. Stars, stripes. I mean, come on. I'm not here to negotiate a deal. I'm the parent. My parents told me, go to school, get straight A's, and you can do what but you it, want. But we talked. It's that learned behavior. Kids aren't, they aren't born to hate. They aren't born to they're be They're taught mean. to they hate. To they're taught. Freddie will bring out the belt. So let's teach them. I never hit my kids. So let's teach them kindness. <laughs> I hit Freddie once. I never okay? said I always, hit. I took, took out the belt, out. my pants will fall off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, take out the belt for. Listen, logic thinking with your kids, to me, always made sense. Now, I got a question for you. Yeah, go for it. You're in the supermarket, mm -hmm. and you're doing your shopping. <laughs> and there's a woman <laughs> whose kid is acting because they want a whoopee. I want that toy, little kid. And the mother says, we ain't got money for that right now. Please put it back. And she puts it back, and the kid goes into this tantrum, screaming, ranting, and raving. And the mother now is humiliated and embarrassed, and she starts smacking the kid. No. Stop it! Stop crying! <laughs> now, this happened to me Sorry, in Pathmark in the Bronx, and I'm watching this unfold. And she's smacking the kid, telling him to shut up. Mm -hmm. So I came over to her and said to her politely, Ma'am, if I smack you that hard, you're going to be crying. And she got all crazy on me. Mm -hmm. Now she started coming at me. But at least you weren't coming at the kid. Cops came, and I told the cop what happened. And he said to her, if I were you, I would chill out. Now, what would you do? Being that you're in this business, what would you do? If the, if the cop came or if there no, was... No, if you saw this thing unfold. So, and she smacks, smacks so the, the truth of the matter is, is that parents, um, you can discipline your child. You, you can't, it's, it's, it's not allowed in the United States to leave a mark on your child. And any kind of, that's considered physical abuse. And physical abuse is not allowed in the United States and there's no tolerance for it. So if there's physical abuse, if you leave marks on your child, DCF can and will be called by a professional if needed. Yeah, absolutely. But I also want to ask you, when we should have done this in the beginning, you're a psychiatrist versus a psychologist and can you just explain the difference that so people understand when they're looking for help for their child? Absolutely. So a psychiatrist is um, a medical doctor, an MD. So a psychiatrist went to medical school, they can prescribe medications. Some psychiatrists like myself also do therapy. Therapy, I, I did psychodynamic training, I'm very well trained in therapy. So some psychiatrists do both therapy and medication. A psychologist um, can, does therapy. There are psychologists who are also doctors, who have a PhD or a PsyD, so they're also called doctor. The difference is, is, is the medication component. So one prescribes medication, a psychiatrist, a, psycho a psychologist doesn't prescribe medication. The beauty is, is that psychiatrists and psychologists work together to get optimal outcomes for the, ch for the children. So an often oftentimes, I'll communicate very frequently with the psychologists in the community. I don't do any of the therapy and, this, and I only handle the medication in many, many, many cases. And that way, the psychologist can handle the therapy component and I handle the medication com component. And com together we treat it as a team approach and get these children as well as, as um, quickly as possible. And Mara, this leads to your question. 
Um, ADHD in children. <laughs> ADHD in children. Prescribe yes. how how young is too like too young. So it depends. The, the answer is it depends um, in terms of how how young you can put a child on medication for ADHD. And ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, you know, I always wonder what the hell those letters meant. <laughs> Just saying. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. There's different types of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. There's a prime, predominantly inattentive type. There's a combined type and a predominantly hyperactive type. And medication comes into play. There's multiple different medications that you can use for ADHD, but there are also behavioral interventions that can be used for ADHD. And there are therapists that can work with the child to help with behavioral modifications and interventions. Schools also have tools that can help with ADHD teachers and placement in the classroom, um, uh, plans, specific individualized plans for the children can help with ADHD. But in terms of the medication component, which is what I think what you're asking me, um, there's, there's lots of medications. One of them is the stimulants, right? Stimulants are like methylphenidate, which is like Ritalin, or the amphetamine class, things like you've heard of like now, isn't Adderall. Isn't Ritalin dangerous? So there, there's, all medications have side effects, right? All medications have side effects. But these have been studied at length in children. Um, and as long as they're prescribed at safe dosages by doctors who know the child well and have you know, done blood pressure and looked into their family history to make sure there's no history of premature cardiac death, then these medications are absolutely safe in children. Really? Yeah. So do you think putting children on Adderall could trigger like an addiction in their... So there's ac so that's a good question. There's actually a lot of research on that. And they say that ch that children who have a propensity for substance abuse, if you actually don't treat the ADHD and you let it go undiagnosed and you let it go untreated, actually the likelihood of a, a person actually developing a substance use problem superimposed on the ADHD can actually be pretty great. So there's a fine line between um, whether it can cause an, an addiction and whether the person has real ADHD that needs to be treated. But with that, stimulants, yes, are addictive medications. They do develop a tolerance. A tolerance means that you need a higher and higher level of dose of a medication to have the same effect um, of ha that the medication initially had on you. So there is a, a propensity for tolerance to develop. And isn't there an age? You, the earlier you start somebody on these drugs, the more you're going to have to change the amount as they get older. So, or the medication, right? Because they build a tolerance up to it, sometimes meds have to be changed. So is so this the right approach? So there's, the answer is it depends, okay? It depends on the child and it depends on the family and what, what's going on in the child's life. Is the child failing out of school? Okay, is the child getting into arguments and being disruptive with school frequently? If the answer is yes, then medications may be, may be a helpful solution. Behavioral interventions, I always say, should be an intervention, no matter what, whether, whether the child's on medication or not, because A, it doesn't hurt, right? In terms of, you said whether they develop a tolerance. Yes, like I said, these, these can be potentially addictive substances, and yes, it is a possibility that people can develop a tolerance. Therefore, it needs to be taken only as prescribed at the dosages as prescribed. That means that mom and dad, you don't want to play around with giving your child an extra pill, or the child, if it's an adolescent, is taking their own medication, they shouldn't start taking their own uh, medications on their own at excess of dosages right, to well, make sure it's you safe. You go off on the weekends, you let your kid run around, or you stop for summers, and then you restart again in the fall. One of our clients had a problem with one of her children, and she took them off their meds and thought, he was having side effects from the meds and developing some tics and tremors. She took them off. Well, the kid went absolutely haywire. Mm -hmm. And the police had to get involved. And they found a new medication, and it went through a whole political governmental intervention. And she finally said, she said, he needs medication. I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But it took going to that degree with government intervention to realize that I can't just take them off. I have to find another one. Well, you have to look at um, ADHD as looking at it as there's a, there's a chemical imbalance. And these medications target chemicals in the brain, particularly norepinephrine and dopamine. And just like you have to treat diabetes and make the glucose a normal amount, with ADHD, you do need to regulate the norepinephrine and dopamine in order for your child to, to do well. That being said, again, there are many, many, many cases that I have treated with zero medications and the children have done well with no medications. So it's a fine line as to whether it's needed or not needed, and it's really determined on a case-by-case -case basis as to what's most helpful for yeah, your child. Yeah, but Doc, isn't it then you, the individual, that's making this call? I mean, if I bring you a, a kid and you decide not to go that way and Dawn brings her, her son and you decide to go another way, isn't the, the deal here, the person making the call, 
it's the, the deal. It's the individual. And it's the family because it's a team approach. So how you're going to yeah, act? But the family is just going to listen to Doc and say yes. Yeah, but they have to help. Once they leave Doc's office, Dr. Sam's office, they have to continue the treatment, the help, and the support at home. If you have a family that's not going to give a certain amount of support, then maybe you need a medication. If you have a kid who's home alone a lot with no parental intervention because everyone's working, then maybe the kid needs a little more. Okay, but no, come on. We've done a lot of stuff out with the schools. We've been at Atlantic and everything else. The kids call here after the shooting. You love it what ain't, we do, right? It ain't working. <laughs> it's wow. not working. It's just not working. I don't, I just don't understand this because it's not functioning. It doesn't work. And it's nobody wants to system. talk. It's a Broken, broken system. system. Let's just say broke. Forget about system. Because if it was system, it would be something to talk about. This just keeps going on and on and on and on. And then they want gun control and they want all these other side things. But that's not the solution. I mean, where do we start to have an intelligent conversation to say, listen, we got a problem. Let's start here. When we come back from a commercial break, we're going to continue this intelligent conversation. 888-565-1470. That's when Mara says, and Dawn just calls commercial breaks. That's right. And we'll be right back. Okay. Good Dawn time. just calls the break. <laughs> I am crunchy because knowledge is power. I am crunchy because knowledge is power. I am crunchy because crunchy is a revolutionary is line of safe crunchy and high performing line of free safe cosmetics and that are redefining free beauty. Cosmetics you no longer have to sacrifice beauty. your health for your beauty or your beauty for your health. Be conscious about what are in your cosmetics and how they affect your body. Your cosmetics Contact me at 703 5092 or explore at crunchy Again, it's 703-509-2592. What is Deborah Size? With over 25 years of personal training experience and workout techniques, Deb Varsalone invites you to Deborah Size. Deborah Size comes to you. From the privacy of your own home or group training facility, Deborah Size can meet your individual fitness needs. Offering one-on-one, -on -one, non-impact resistance training, post-surgical strengthening, to higher level boot camp and weight training, Deborah Size will meet your personal fitness goals at any age. Contact Deb at 561-307-9283. Schedule an initial consultation and get ready for a stronger, healthier you. 561-307-9283. In this world of social media and cacophony of sound, how do you get noticed? How do you get heard? In a world of instant gratification, how do you find appreciation? It's time to be heard. Become a radiating magnet and allow the law of attraction to come fully into play. Being completely in the moment speaks louder than words and actions. It's time to become fully present. It's time to put Humpty Dumpty together again. Call or text 561-351-9134. Become your radiating self. Contact Clyde at 561-351-9134. Welcome to the Brooklyn Cafe, where every day is a new adventure. If you'd like to join Don and Freddie S. at the cafe, give them a call at 888-565-1470, toll free. Come on in or call to share a thought for the day and get all the information you need to help your business grow. That's 888-565-1470. Let's reopen the cafe doors. Now, back to Don and Freddie S. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the Brooklyn Cafe TV show. And don't forget to like this video. And subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when we go live. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Boy, I wish these walls could talk. Dylan, if you ever wear that hat again, Dylan, I swear. I swear I'm going to chase you with my car. Washington National hat is not allowed in the house.
Oh, okay. okay. Now that I know. All right, so you're okay then. You're Sometimes good. I think we should keep the cameras rolling on our outtakes during our commercial break Why? because the conversation we just had, the Freudian. Freudian? Freudian <laughs> envy, yeah. The Freudian envy. We can't say the P word, but it's P envy. All right, who cares? You say it because we're always talking about something healthy. That is healthy. <laughs> I've been told by many people in your profession that the Sigma was an idiot. Sigmund Freud was an idiot. Was really? an idiot. That's what I was told. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think she'll say that. Some people bow down to him. And some people don't. They think <laughs> that he's completely false. Where are you, Doc? Where am I? Yeah. So that's a good question. So there's different thought processes in therapy, okay? <laughs> she is such a politician. Yes. So I there's, love her delivery, there's, though. There's a psychoanalytic thought process, which is more Freudian in nature. There's cognitive behavioral therapy, which is something that's very common to be used now, very evidence-based. Um, so it depends. The answer is it depends for the particular patient on what is going to be most effective. Um, it depends on the disorder that you're treating. And that truly is the correct answer, and that's truly how I feel about it. Why did you go into psychiatry, and why child psychiatry? <sighs> Great question. It's very rare. Yes, very rare. I never really thought that I would go into psychiatry candidly, and the truth of the matter is, is that all throughout medical school, the most important thing to me I realized when it came time to deciding a career was I loved everything. I loved every specialty there was, and I realized what I loved more so than anything was being able to talk to my patients and connect with them. And I have a passion for always working with children and adolescents and working with families. So that's why I see children, adolescents, and adults is because I like the whole spectrum. I like the diversity. And I like treating the family as a whole. And I feel like you can make the most impact on an individual when you treat the whole family. You work with children, adolescents, and adults as well do. as the families. Yeah. When the ch kids come in, you, do you work with the kids alone? Uh huh. So when I see a, a, ch a child and I do a typical evaluation of a child, um, I start off and I see the child and the parents together and then I see just the parents or just the child. I see the setting of the room, which, which one's better, and then I switch and see just the parents or just the child. And they come to my office and the child plays in the meantime with all the Play-Doh and whatever other things I've got in my office and coloring books. Um, and then I see them again together. So it starts off together, then it's individual, then it's individual, then it's together. And I think that it needs to be done that way in order to, again, keep the family all on the same page. It's all encompassing. Do you ever find that families act differently when they go to your office as opposed to be in the house? I think that absolutely people are different in public than they are inside their own homes and for that reason there are times where I you know give a random phone call to a patient during the middle of the week and say hey just checking in seeing what's going on you can get a better feel for what's really going on when you hear a parent talk um, and it's the middle of the school day or the end of the school day and we're doing homework time, absolutely that's, that's why a you good should time. have you should have cameras in their house embedded oh right God. and then you put it on and that's you put an it on the computer of privacy no no it's it's therapy i mean you're telling them your life anyway like right? nanny 911 have you ever that's seen that that's a different show? that's a different animal <laughs> I have i'm to just telling you the hardest thing is when you're a stay at home parent and even when their kids go to school they come home and they're home at three o'clock in the afternoon it's the middle of the day you've got homework you've got snack you've got the friends you've got computer time you've got all this stuff dinner bath laundry and then your spouse comes home and you're just done the kids are oh they're in bed and everything looks lovely and you can't not even begin to explain <laughs> what kind of life that you have you can't even admit. lord have mercy well, <laughs> yeah don't even ask <laughs> it's a good point i mean all jokes aside that's a very good point and i say to my parents you know, you can't get a graduate degree in how to become a parent. And it's something that you learn as you go. It's a roller coaster ride. There's ups and downs. But in order to be truly effective with your children, you need to take care of yourself. And taking 20 minutes or even 15 minutes, moms and dads, outside of your day to say, hey, this is me time, realize that, yes, it's you time, but it's you time for your children. So take a moment, take a step back, and breathe, because you'll be a more effective parent when you're healthy yourself. You know, it's now we're at this generation where we become grandparents. You're a grandfather, and you probably look at things a whole different way than you did as a father. No. Raising <laughs> Rowan? What no. What happens when they say something and you go, you know. But you know, the funny thing is, I told you about this. Well, My mother said we good. have to sit on a fence. She never told me it was a picket fence. The grandparent or the Yeah, parent? the grandparent. Because you can't tell your kids how to raise your kids. It doesn't matter how you raise them because they're not going to agree no matter what. You see a lot of different generational families now, I bet. Absolutely. There are, there are different, definitely different generations of families who have struggles, and grandparents will have different viewpoints as parents and vice versa. Um, but speaking of that, there actually is some evidence to say, like, there's a transgenerational transmission of trauma. So we have in this Holy community smoke. some... Um, 
there, that we have in this community some, you know, Holocaust survivors, so to speak, grandparents, and how a parent raises their child may actually be influenced, we think, based on how they were raised by their parents and the kind of trauma that they had during the Holocaust. But that's different because a Holocaust grandparent is trauma. Yeah, it's absolutely trauma. So th how that their child is raised, how the grandparents' child is raised, the adult generation is raised. But actually, Latino families don't have that effect. Uh, my grandfather was a sugarcane grower, mm -hmm. and there was no trauma. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that kind of understanding. And it's a shame because we should learn, and we talked about this before, about what happened. This is one of the things I, I, I love about what you guys do, the Jews do, is that you don't forget your past. You should never forget your past. If you're a Latino, don't forget no, your past either. No one should ever forget their past. Because, because it teaches you about the future. We all come from a place, but even forget the trauma, just everyone's cultural upbringing. Culture I, to culture, you have to see differences right? in childbearing. Culture to culture, we absolutely see differences in childbearing. And we also look at it because, you know, grandparents could have come from a different country. And adapting to the American lifestyle and the American way of life is, is completely different. And I oftentimes see um, a disconnect between how a parent was born and raised and how a child is growing up in this kind of environment. And oftentimes there's a struggle between in a child feels where they may want to go out all the time because in America, children go out, right? They go out and hang out to the, with their friends at the mall. Well, maybe in another country, that's not the norm. So here a child's trying to find their American identity while holding on to the identity of another country, of, their country of origin that their parents may have come from. So it's important that parents really listen and see where their own cultural beliefs can mesh with the American cultural way in order to be most helpful for their child. But the funny thing about that, that whole deal is that it's become a business to grow up in today's society. It takes money, and it takes more money, and I have kids on the retreat making ends meet because uncle is teaching him how to sell drugs. Yeah. I got this whole thing. I mean, I've been down all of this. So when I coach, I could tell you, I went to the precinct more times than not to bail kids out of jumping styles and everything else. The bottom line, it's a business. And if you want to teach your kids how to get along today, they have to bring it to the table. You know, looking at your phone 23 hours a day doesn't make any sense. And you're going to have to learn the fact. You're going to pay the piper. Don't find yourself in a position where you don't have a tomorrow. But it's very hard when you know your child needs help. Even when your child says, Mom and Dad, I need help. Finding the right therapist, physician, medications is daunting and it's the right person you can trust because if you're working with children, what you or what a therapist puts in that seed of thought, if it is the seed that you don't, are not in agreement with or it could potentially endanger your child down the road, it's really scary. So sometimes we take on so much because we think we can handle it and we can't. But I love Dr. Sam's approach and she's authentic, she's transparent. She does the therapy side and the medication side, as, long as, as well as the team approach, which I love because how can you just take a therapist's diagnosis and agree with it without actually evaluating the child yourself and just giving a medication? Because what if it's not in agreement with you? Then you have to come to a sort of an agreement with the family. Absolutely, and I think that the key is, is that um, psychiatrists and pediatricians or anyone who deals with children in general your, our primary source is really the child and the parent. And I always tell my parents, hey, listen, you know your kid better than anyone. Tell me what I need to know. Tell me your hidden secrets. Tell me what happens behind the scenes. And the more honest with you, you are with me about that, the more I can help you guys. So the parents are really, they're the diamond. They're the diamond into me getting the child well, into us getting the child well is the history and the parents. I wish I knew her when we had that pediatric practice. My dad's a pediatrician. Oh, really? So her, her thought process is everything we said is you have to be in connection with your pediatrician and be open and transparent and communicate with all your team members. Sopranos, does your parents know everything about you? Um, yeah, I went to an adolescence doctor. No, no, but I'm saying, <laughs> this, this, would you honestly say that your parents know, because I could honestly tell you my parents didn't know anything about me. Um, 
Now they do. Now they do. But, okay. when but I before, young, when you were lie, younger, no. Lie, 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 okay. lie, lie. When I start and to send <laughs> information out, because okay. we're running out of time, how can people find you? Absolutely. Um, my name is Dr. Samantha Saltz. I'm a psychiatrist. My number is 561-510-9150. That's 561-510-9150. And for information, you can always contact us, find us on Facebook, or give us a call at 866-224-5422. Have a great day, everyone. Be kind to each other. We will see you Monday, same time, same place. And don't be late. And don't be late. Bye-bye. <laughs> you almost forgot to say it. Delray Gallery, located in the Delray Art Complex, is one of South Florida's top venues for art, culture, music, and private events. The Heart of Delray Gallery is a cutting-edge, 11,000-square-foot art exhibition showcasing local artists and artisans with the highest quality of talent and vision, highlighting South Florida's creative arts. Visit us at the Heart of Delray Gallery, 1440 North Federal Highway in Delray Beach. Come, take a tour, book your next private event or fundraiser, or join us for Art Walk, the first Friday of every month from 6 to 11 p.m. For more information, give us a call at 561-278-0074. Health and Vitamin Concepts can help balance you through an innovative, non-invasive biomeridian assessment that measures the energetic properties of your body and naturally corrects the imbalances. Offering a complete thyroid, hormone, and nutritional profile, Health and Vitamin Concepts identifies the specific vitamins and herbs in the exact amount your body needs. Call for more information, 561-392-8448, or visit online at healthandvitaminconcepts.com. If you're ready to have more energy, better health, and a greater sense of well-being, make an appointment today at Health and Vitamin Concepts in Boca Raton at 7152 Barracasa Way. Call 561-392-8448. That's 561-392-8448. <laughs> Well, that's about it for today, and even though the show is over, the Brooklyn Cafe is always open for business. You're invited to join the fun Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 1 p.m. If you missed some of the laughs from today, Don and Freddie S. will bring you more goodwill next time. Although today's show was live, you can follow the cafe on Facebook at Brooklyn Cafe. To rewatch every minute of the show, call 866 224 5422 to talk with Don and Freddie S. after the closing or to leave an order for fun for the next show. Have a meaningful day. The opinions expressed on the preceding spot.